the weather outside today is appalling. So all the plans that I had made in my head for going out and getting particular shots have been scrapped. So instead the video I'm going to do today is a video which many people would consider a rite of passage for any YouTube photography vlogger. I'm going to do a what's in my bag video. First item. Bag. Now you can easily spend an absolute fortune on bags and to be fair there's probably lots of benefits to spending an absolute fortune on bags but I haven't. Um, I have bought an Amazon Basics DSLR bag, probably one of the cheapest bags you can get. But I tell you what, it may be massively, massively cheap, but it's massively, massively brilliant as well. Next, lenses. First lens. This is a lens I don't use all that frequently, to be honest. Um, it's a Nikon 50mm 1.4. This tends to be used any time I do portraits, which nowadays is very infrequently. Having said that, it's a brilliant prime lens. It's very sharp. Um, it performs very well in low light. So there are certain circumstances for my landscape photography where I will bring this out. Next lens. This is the Nikon 28 to 300 millimeter lens, which is 3.5 to 5.6. Now, this is a strange lens. It doesn't really excel at any particular focal range. So if you want absolute best performance, this probably isn't the lens to go for. Having said that, I do rate this as one of the best lenses I've ever purchased. And in my opinion, I think it's the best travel photography lens you can buy for um, a Nikon camera at the moment. Um, the fact that in this tiny little package here, I can fit such a vast spectrum of focal ranges that allows me to shoot wide and shoot zoomed in with telephoto is amazing. Um, plus it's got vibration reduction on as well. The quality is generally pretty good. Um, I tend to use this an awful lot. Um, don't be put off. This is a fantastic lens. Right. Next lens is the Samyang 14mm 2.8. Um, this is quite a cheap lens, but again, it's brilliant. I tend to use this exclusively for astrophotography. Um, the wide 2.8 aperture lets in an awful lot of light, and the 14mm focal range um, shoots very wide, which is a great benefit when shooting the night sky. The only downside I would say to this is it's... Um, lacks an autofocus, so you really need to learn the infinity point on this well um, before you start shooting any astro shots, but highly recommend it. On to the big guns. Now this is a lens that I only purchased fairly recently. It's the Sigma 150 to 600 millimeter lens, which is five to 6.3. Now, I bought this for a trip that I made to Africa a few months ago um, and the reason for the purchase was I wanted to get more effective wildlife shots because that was a big focus of the trip and for that it's brilliant. The only lens left is the one that's on the camera shooting now um, and that is the Nikon 18mm to 35mm and that's 3.5 to 4.5. Um, this is a brilliant wide, wide angle lens and it's probably the, the lens that I use more than any others for my landscape shots. I'm a big fan of shooting wide as you could probably tell by a lot of my shots. So this is the one that I always use. Um, it, within Nikon's range it's probably the cheapest of the wide angles but in my opinion it's as good as the others. Um, it's very light, very portable and a really, really good buy. Highly recommend it. Next up, filters. First filter here is a Hoya um, UV filter. Now, I personally can't tell the difference between this being on the photo and not. It does very little for me. However, it acts as a phenomenal protector to the end of your lens. I'd far rather destroy this than the glass. So, essential. Hoya circular polarizer. Um, 
This is surely an absolute essential purchase for any landscape photographer. It's one of the few effects you cannot replicate in post-processing effectively. So, essential. Little filter bag here, and I've got an array of ND filters and um, graduated ND filters in here. Um, again, essential. Next on the list, tripods. So this is not my primary tripod anymore. This is really um, been superseded by my latest tripod purchase. I use this exclusively for video footage now. Um, this is the Hanel Triad 40. Overall, it's been pretty good. The tripod that the camera is currently on is the Mifoto Globetrotter. It's a new purchase that I only made a few weeks ago and so far it's phenomenal. It, it actually blows the previous tripod out of the water. It's carbon fibre, it's very light, very versatile, very sturdy, which is everything you need in a good travel orientated um, tripod. Now, the camera, um, obviously I can't show you that because it's currently filming me, um, but I have a Nikon D850, um, which is currently um, attached to an L plate, um, which is attaching it to the tripod. Spare battery. Now, I always have a spare battery. Um, the batteries in this, these latest DSLRs last a very long time, but it's always good for peace of mind to have a spare. And I would even go as far to say as, if you're going on travel related shoots, you should probably have two of these. Memory cards. You can never have too many memory cards. My advice is get as many as you can. This is a tiny little spirit level, which fits into the hot shoe for the, um, for the camera. Very useful, um, it gives you a very quick visual gauge on whether you're shooting level or not. Really cheap, highly recommended. Um, this is quite a useful little um, lens cleaner. So it's got a little brush on one end, and a more compact cleaning device on the other. An SD card reader to USB, pretty self-explanatory. Blower, everyone needs a blower. Remote shot release, um, this is a 10 pin one for the um, D850, quite cheap, absolutely essential, means you can shoot off without actually touching the camera, gives you sharper images. Lens cleaning fluid, um, again, always good to have. I'd highly recommend on a regular basis cleaning your lenses just to keep them in tip-top condition and this is one of the prime ways of achieving that. Which leads me on to lens cloths. I don't tend to carry too many of these with me at any one time, but I've got loads of them. Right, on to video um, equipment. Now, I tend to shoot most of my video on an Acaso EK7000. Now, this is just a cheap GoPro, essentially. It's way cheaper than a GoPro. So, um, I was a bit skeptical on what kind of results I could get from this before purchasing, but I have to say for the price, it's really, really good. The reviews weren't wrong. Um, the video footage is almost as good as a GoPro and, and to be honest many people couldn't tell a difference. I would say its biggest weakness is um, audio. Its audio isn't great at the moment so you can kind of see I've kind of improved a bit of a little windshield for that at the moment. I'm going to invest in better audio equipment in due course but this is the best I have at the moment. When I'm actually out in the field I tend to use um, this little tripod for the Acaso and I can screw this in as well and use it as a bit of a selfie stick as well. Quite cheap but quite effective. <laughs> a, a little dead rat here. Um, now this is a little um, sort of wind muff and I'll use this um, sometimes on the side of my Acaso. Um, I found it's a little bit overkill for the Acaso though, so I'm not using it too frequently at the moment. Um, but hopefully on the new audio equipment, which should be getting to me pretty imminently, this is going to be applied on that. 
spare batteries for the Casso, it absolutely chews them, absolutely chews them. So um, I bought as many as I possibly can. Head torch. Um, I do an awful lot of astrophotography. Um, it's one of the areas that I enjoy the most. So it's absolutely essential to have a reasonably decent head torch. Gloves. Um, I think these are essential as well. Um, you know, you know it's a bit of a theme in my equipment here. Um, now, I've got these very fashionable, very sexy looking uh, hobo gloves, I like to affectionately call them. Um, they look absolutely appalling and you, you may well have noticed them in some of my other videos. Um, but we're not here on a fashion parade. Um, they're really good at keeping the majority of my hands warm while still allowing me to operate my camera equipment with my fingertips. So yeah, this is pretty much the only types of glove I use when out shooting. Smartphone, now everyone's got a smartphone, but I think increasingly these are an absolute vital tool for, to landscape photography. Effectively, they're personal computers um, that are highly portable. The first use I tend to use this for is actually, rather than lug the heavy DSLR around, um, and try and frame my compositions. I'll quite often try and find the compositions using the camera on the, um, the smartphone. Um, it's a lot more practical, um, I find. And once you've found a composition using this, then you can upgrade, bring in the big guns for that. Also, there's a whole array of brilliant apps that you can use um, to really help you with regards to um, your landscape shots. Um, there's great weather apps Meteo Earth is one of the best that I use on a frequent um, basis, but I also use apps like Sun Surveyor, which is brilliant, um, which will tell you for any given location um, when the sun is going to rise and when it's going to set and how it's going to track through the sky. So it's really fantastic at pre-planning um, your shoot. Essential. Books. <laughs> um, I actually think a lot of equipment isn't really that important for landscape photography. Um, I tend to find some of the most valuable things that I've ever purchased are reading materials, things that have inspired me. Um, so things like National Geographic, photography books from all around the world, 501 must visit destinations. I'm a bit of a travel addict, so I love books like this. It gives me ideas. The moment I haven't sort of even a tiny seed of thought that I might go somewhere, I'll buy the guidebooks, I'll start to do my research, I'll start to figure out how practical it is to shoot certain landscapes, etc. So you name it, I've got the guidebooks to them all. And even if I don't use them and I don't end up going to the destinations, it's not a waste of time. I've still learned something about those destinations. So I would recommend um, any photographer to really just find inspiration, go out there, search ideas. There's a big wide world out there. I've been fortunate enough um, during my landscape photography career to travel all around the world. Um, but I've only been able to do that because I've gone out there and researched and found the ideas and found the inspiration in materials like this. Um, at the start of this photographic journey, I really didn't know um, what was out there in the wider world. And it's, uh, it's only through broadening my horizons through these materials that I've been able to broaden my horizons as a photographer. And finally, onto my office. Well, it's probably been a bit generous to call it an office. It's really just a desk in a living room in a flat. But I like to think of it as my office. Um, essentially, this is where I do all my post-processing. This is my desktop computer that's got a nice amount of RAM and an SSD drive to make it nice and zippy. This is my 32-inch 4K monitor, which is one of the best photography purchases I've ever made. It's totally revolutionised the way I edit my pictures. Um, it will show you flaws in your images that you never realised were there. 
Um, so yeah, amazing purchase. Um, in terms of software on this, I tend to just use Lightroom, Photoshop, and I use Premiere Pro for my video work. Um, but essentially, that is it. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this little look into my photography world and the equipment I use. Um, I hope you found it useful. Until next time, um, please subscribe to my channel um, and hopefully the weather plays ball next weekend and I can actually get out 